In this week's episode, we talk about doing business with non-Christians, the stupidity of operating with blind faith, and the dangers of creating win-lose relationships. Hi, and welcome to episode 36 of Business Greenhouse TV. Just really got back from Newcastle, straight from the airport here to film this for you. Spent the night down there talking to entrepreneurs, had a great time. Earlier in the week, took some time out with the family, went to New Zealand, a bit of skiing and a bit of R&R, so that was a lot of fun. So it's been a bit of a crazy week, but uh, glad to be here back in the saddle shooting this for you. Would you do me a favor? Big question to start the show. Would you do me a favor? And would you go into the comments below here and tag a friend or two? I want more people to get this training, to get the application, to build businesses, to change culture. And I need you to go in the comments below and tag a friend or two. Just start by typing their name. It'll come up. Tag them. They'll get the alert about the show and they'll get to get plugged into this too. Would you do that for me? That would be a massive blessing for me. If you would do that, I'm going to remind you many times throughout the show today to do that for me. Got some very solid questions. Let's get into them. Paul, what's our first question? Tanya Euler asks, how should we go about working with businesses with views that are against our personal faith? Tanya, that's a solid question. And I took that one because it, I get asked it a lot. You know, how, should we be doing business with people of different faiths and different value system? And there's no blanket rule, okay? This is, a, this is a case by case scenario that you and everybody needs to think through. It's a case by case scenario because there's many elements to it. But I wanna address it from the standpoint of, I think most people default away from doing business with people with different value systems and different faiths. I think that's a mistake. I, I think, I think there's, there's many reasons why we should actually take a step forward and actually engage with these people with different faiths because number one, and, and, and importantly, we're in business to make a profit and we need customers, okay? So, so commercially, it's a good idea. But even second to that, I also feel like, you know, if, we, if Jesus is going to all the world, okay? So we need to go into all the world, all the people groups, all of the, all of the different demographics so that we can go and bring the kingdom and bring an expression of the kingdom and let people understand, you know, we're more likely to give people um, a positive view on Jesus by going to do business with them and loving them and giving them a good product than we are if we shy away and go back to our safe little bubble of trouble, okay? So I do think we need to go. However, what we don't want to be doing is crossing a moral boundary. We would all have, uh, sometimes you might be asked to do something that really crosses a moral boundary, you know? And that's when you need to be able to stand up and say, no, I won't do that, okay? So you've got to kind of, you've got to go juggle that. But I think, you know, this comes down to what I've always taught. We need to learn the art of doing association without assimilation. We've got to go. We've got to go and be with people of all walks of life. But we can't assimilate to them. We can't, we, we don't want to become like them, but we have to go. We've got to be so secure in our faith that we can go to any group of people and just love on them like Jesus would. And the power of that is the power of being a living testimony and a living gospel. And that is so super powerful, okay? I think it's too easy to run back to what's comfortable and, and write that off as the spiritual answer, but I don't think that's what God has called us to do, okay? So morally, you need to check where what you're being asked to do, but generally, we need to go and do business with these people because that's how they're gonna see an expression of who this Jesus guy is, okay? And commercially, it's very good for your business. So I think generally, we do need to go. You know, Jesus spent most of his time warning us about the Pharisees, not actually about the people that didn't want the faith, okay, of different faiths. He warned us about the Pharisees as his number one. I think we've got to remember that. You know, we, you just need to work it out as a one-on-one -on -one and feel what's going on inside here. And if, it's a, if, if, if they're asking you to do something that cross a moral boundary, don't do it. But if it's just business, I think we need to go and I think we need to love them and be Jesus' hands and feet to the people that we are, that are brought across our path. I think... I think if there is a blanket rule, that would be my way. Yes, we should go, but make sure you're not crossing a moral boundary that would really kind of upset you in here. Very, very, very good question. Now, would you 
Uh, recommend a friend. Would you go to the comments below, tag a friend. I want more people to be consuming this content. Uh, may call me selfish, but that's what I want. I'm giving it to you for free. In return, I want you to tag some people, build a bigger following, change culture faster. Would you do that for me? Paul, what's question number two? Tiffany Sheedy asks, how do you navigate decision making when faced with an awesome business opportunity that also involves risk? Where do you draw the line between wisdom and logic versus making a step of faith? Tiffany, <clears throat> this question is a, I mean, they're different questions, but it's a little bit similar to the first one, in which case, you know, I am personally, I'm personally quite risk averse. I'm, I'm not one of those who dares wins, bowls straight in, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, kind of like hope for the best. That, that's, there are certainly people who are like that and it has worked for them. But personally, this is not my way. I'm always look, like, I'm always on the lookout for an opportunity. And, and I, my thing, I'd probably, say, I'd probably say no to 90% of them, okay? And yes to only a fraction because I don't want any distractions in my life and we've got a pretty big assignment and we can't have things that drag us away from our assignment. So I'm generally uh, a no, uh, but I'm always on the lookout. But when you're weighing up uh, a, an opportunity, I think, I think too many people get caught up in blind faith. Well, they think, well, if it came across my path, it must be God. I don't know what I'm doing, but he'll make up for this bit that I don't know. And then it usually ends in tears. Okay. Because that's not stewarding. You know, there's a scripture that says, what kind of man goes to build a tower, doesn't first measure everything out and know his numbers. Therefore, when he builds it, it's a bit crooked and he looks like a wally in front of his friends. That's maybe not exactly how it is. That's the Wes International Version, but it's essentially the same thing. I think it's the same. Like too many people just go, oh, well, this is, been, this is in front of me and must be God. And then they go into it with, without knowing what's going on. I, those people usually end up with a hard luck story down the line. Okay. So I would be looking at, like the, the number one way to reduce risk is to increase knowledge. Okay. So I'd be looking at this opportunity saying, do we already have the knowledge to be able to execute on it well? I would only be entertaining things that you have knowledge in. If it's completely left field and you have no idea what you're doing and you're going to have to learn it on the job, the risk is much, much higher. I'd be taking opportunities that are complementary to the skill set that you currently have right now. Then if you know what you're doing, the risk is much, much lower Then you can go and execute on that and produce a great result. Okay. But when it's something that's miles apart, if you don't have the knowledge or you can't buy it in or there's nobody on your team with the knowledge, man, the risk in that deal is so big. And the, and the best way to reduce risk is to increase knowledge. Know what you're doing, okay? Know exactly how to execute on that opportunity, turn it into a profit without, without jeopardizing what you're currently doing. There's no point in, in swapping the profitable businesses. You got one that's profitable right now, you take on an opportunity, but you have to drop the ball with the other one. Therefore, you're not actually any further ahead, but you've got to work more hours. I, I, think, I think you need to be looking at things that kind of like dovetail nicely into what you're already doing, that you already have the skill set and knowledge to be able to execute on, and those opportunities are what build a great business over time, okay? But just because an opportunity comes by does not mean you should be taking it. You've still got to weigh it up. You've still got to get that sense of the spirit inside of you. Is it a yes? Is it a no? Um, and, uh, and listening to God on that one. And, uh, and then, you know, personally for me, I'm not going out trying to take on all these opportunities to build an empire. I would rather slowly and slowly and consistently add things to the portfolio so that in the long run, it's very solid, very sustainable. I can still sleep at night. I can still, you know, offer all my offerings and my giving and all of that is very nice and consistent. That to me is a better way. And uh, I think it's a better way for most. There are a few people who are gifted to kind of just bowl into anything and make it work. Uh, and they're the people that, you know, are happy to work 150 hours a week and, and just grind it out. But if that's not you, I would be going with just go with the stuff that you already have the skill set for and knowledge because it reduces the risk, gives you far more chance of, uh, of executing on it well. And then if it is complementary, then, then go at it 100%. If it's really far and varied, I'd be massively cautious because it could be a massive distraction. You remember the, the Gibeonites, so the Israelites were on the journey. The Gibeonites came from just over the hill. 
and they and they and they manufactured um, moldy bread and uh, and run out of water, so that when they came and they said, "Listen, we've come from so far away, we want to do a treaty with you. Let us in, and we'll fight for your army." They got allowed in because um, because he didn't inquire of the Lord. And then they ended up with this, this Gibeonite rue where they were a nightmare. They were a thorn in their side for the rest of the journey. Um, that's what the enemy can do if, if, you, if you don't take the time to consider this carefully. If you just go with every opportunity that shows up, you're likely to take one and then it becomes a nightmare for you later on. So you want to be checking with all of this as you go through the journey. Very solid question. Let's go to Word of the Week. This week, Proverbs. Proverbs 20, 14. Proverbs 20, 14. Let me read it to you. It's no good. It's no good, says the buyer. Then off he goes and boasts about his purchase. <clears throat> so there's this culture right now of like getting a good deal and screwing them down so that you're the one that wins. The problem, like that is like that culture of screwing people down, getting the best deal is so 180 degrees opposed to this book. You know, the, the basic ethos or one of the top few ethos of this book is so that all will prosper. And you can't have a culture where you're trying to create where everybody prospers when you're screwing somebody down to create a win-lose, okay? Like, you know, people say, oh, I've got to, you know, like, they, they t to the seller, they're like, oh, I can't possibly, I've run out of money. That's my limit. I don't have any more. Coming up with all these lies to get a good deal. Then they run off and tell their friends, ha, 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 I got this great deal. Could have paid more, didn't have to because I beat them down. The Bible is warning you that that's not the way to go, okay? You know, it's, it's no good, it's no good. And then you run off and tell your friends what a deal you got. We've got to make sure that we're creating win-win in everything that we ever do. The minute somebody is doing it and they're not making any money in a business context, it's win-lose. You're going to win, they're going to lose. The problem with that is the same people that are doing that are putting a Jesus fish on their business card and it's bad for the branding, okay? You really can't have a culture whereby you're screwing people because that makes you win and then you're going out saying, I'm all, you know, I'm a Christian in business. Like We've, we've got to bring back righteousness at a really high level. And, and what that speaks of there, that is an unrighteous way to go, is to beat somebody down and then go away and boast about the good deal that you got. You've got to make sure that every time you do a business deal, employment deal, whatever it is, that they prosper. You can prosper too, but they have to prosper in the deal. Because if they don't, you're part of the problem. If they prosper, you're part of the solution. And it lets everybody understand what this Jesus guy might be like. Now, would you do me a favor? Would you tag somebody in the comments below that you think would be like a Christian entrepreneur that can, you know, get on there, get them onto Facebook, they can see our stuff. If they like it, they might follow us. And, uh, and that would be really, really good for me if we could do that. Hope you have a good week. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this show, why don't you subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and then you'll get all the alerts of the future shows.